All right, so talking about the cholinergic synapse, um, we're going to start with some of the basic components of a functional synapse. Uh, one is being the axon, which is that little branch on the left, and that's going to lead to uh, our bigger presynaptic axon terminal, which is this big, huge bubble here on the left-hand side. Over here on the right, we have the postsynaptic cell. And down here in the middle, we have our synaptic gap. So in order to uh, start with some of the anatomical parts of the cholinergic synapse, um, we need to talk about some of the uh, physiology behind it. And uh, what that will help us with is uh, to explain um, later on how some of the medications um, that we use, um, how they work and where they work and why they work. So it's important to have this background. So um, everything starts out in the cholinergic synapse with uh, choline. And choline is something that we take out of our diet and it is ultimately um, broken down in our body and moved into the extracellular space where it is moved into the cytoplasm of the presynaptic terminal um, through, oddly enough, a choline transporter. A choline transporter is very specific to uh, the cholinergic um, axons and uh, so what it does is it moves the choline into the uh, cytoplasm of the cell and once it's there, um, a couple things happen. Um, one of the things that happens is um, through the pyruvate cycle uh, within the mitochondria of the cell, uh, acetylcoenzyme A is um, made. And through um, uh, enzyme uh, acetylcholine acetyltransferase, um, we're able to add an acetyl group off of the acetylcoenzyme A to the choline and make acetylcholine. So now that we have acetylcholine um, inside or the cytoplasm of the cell, we have to do something with it. And um, so one of the things that we do is we need to store it so that it can be used at the appropriate times. Um, so the acetylcholine diffuses out into the cytoplasm of the cell and it is transported into these little buckets that we call vesicles. And in order to move into these little uh, vesicles, um, we have a very specific transporter, and that is our vesicular acetylcholine transporter. It moves the acetylcholine uh, into the little vesicles and um, basically allows us to uh, store it in a methodical manner and ultimately release it when we need it. And so how does that happen? Well. Um, what we need is our body to tell us when that happens. And when our body does that, um, it basically produces an action potential that diffuses through the axon uh, into the presynaptic axon terminal. And what that action potential does, it actually will activate um, a bunch of these little uh, voltage-gated uh, voltage -gated calcium channels on the plasma membrane of the axon terminal. So right on the pre presynaptic, um, on the presynaptic uh, axon terminal, um, we have um, these little calcium channels. And um, when they are activated, it causes an influx of calcium from the extracellular space into the intracellular space. And that causes the vesicles to fuse to the axon terminal. And once they fuse to the axon terminal, um, they break open and they um, basically exocytose and uh, spill the contents, the acetylcholine, into the synaptic gap. So now here we got a bunch of acetylcholine in the synaptic gap. And a few things happen at that point in time. Um, so one of the things that can happen is it can, um, these little acetylcholine molecules can fuse to a presynaptic um, receptor. They can, re uh, they can fuse to some postsynaptic receptors here on the uh, postsynaptic cell. Um, they can actually also uh, fuse to uh, extraneural or perisynaptic um, receptors as well on, um, other, in other areas, which uh, is a uh, much more depth 
um, uh, discussion that may happen in a later video. Or the acetylcholine can just uh, break down. Um, and so uh, how it's broken down is um, through an enzyme called acetylcholinesterase. So got acetylcholinesterase that sort of hangs out uh, specifically uh, within the cholinergic uh, synapses of the body, um, specifically to break down acetylcholine. And um, once acetyl, uh, acetylcholinesterate binds to the acetylcholine, it um, breaks it down in a couple of steps. Um, breaks it down into um, a choline molecule. And then it also, and so what that leaves is um, it breaks it down to choline and then uh, acetylated uh, uh, acetylcholinesterase. And that is further broken down into acetic acid, which is basically an inert substance, um, doesn't really do much within the body. And it breaks it and uh, also dissociates into acetylcholinesterase, which is fully functional. Um, so. Um, basically, the acetylcholinesterase binds to the acetylcholine, breaks it down into a functional choline molecule, um, which is ultimately able to be recycled in the cell, or it breaks it, and then it also breaks it down into acetylated cholinesterase, um, which is broken down to acetic acid, which is useless, and fully functional acetylcholinesterase, which can then bind again to acetylcholine. Um, there's also another type of cholinesterase in the body. Um, that is uh, available that can also break this down. Um, it's known as a, by a few names. Um, some of it, uh, sometimes we call it non-specific cholinesterase. Um, sometimes we call it uh, plasma cholinesterase or pseudocholinesterase. This cholinesterase is not quite as efficient as the pseudocholinesterase in the body, um, but it does sort of break it down in the same way. Um, breaks it down into choline molecule and also acetylated uh, acetylcholinesterase, which is then broken down into acetic acid and uh, fully functional cholinesterase. Um, the difference between uh, the acetylcholinesterase and the nonspecific cholinesterase is, uh, well, there's a few things. Uh, acetylcholinesterase is uh, much more efficient, breaks it, uh, the acetylcholine down much um, more efficiently in a more rapid manner um, than the nonspecific cholinesterase. But the nonspecific cholinesterase is not limited specifically to um, acetylcholine. It can break down other things as well. Um, so that's the, um, the enzyme that will break down, uh, for example, like uh, succinylcholine or some of our uh, ester local anesthetics. Um, so um, there is a use for it, and uh, there's a couple of um, basically uh, diseases that uh, manifest in uh, deficiencies of this, um, which can ultimately lead to um, the slowing or an irregular breakdown of some of the medications that we give. And, and that could ultimately be um, pertinent pharmacologically. So once it's broken down, not only does uh, we, do we get functional uh, cholinesterase out of it, but the choline can be transported back into the presynaptic terminal where it um, is able to be retransported back into the vesicles and utilize it again. And so uh, there we got it. That's the basic foundation for uh, what we're going to talk about.